guys, we're here at Menards and today we are going to be buying some wooden supplies for our garden bed. Um, quarantine has got us just losing our minds, but we need to get this done. So, Adam, say hi. You ready? Ready to grow our own food. So the first thing you're going to want to do is get your wood and cut it. I have everything listed here and it's pretty self-explanatory except for the four two-foot posts. You're going to get those from the one by two by eight boards that are cut into six feet. All this wood in my truck. Girl. Hashtag down moment. I had to recalculate all my measurements. I was still going to buy too much wood. So I was standing here with all these extra pieces of wood and the guy was cutting it. And I'm like, oh, I'm so scared. Why did I forget about it? Girl, I did the math wrong. But since I didn't cut it, but since I didn't cut it, I guess it returns. So we change. I'm just loading the last little bit of the wood in the car, and we can go home and get started. Ooh, yeah. All that wood. <clears throat> Now we have to go back into the store because we need to get the rest of the screws and hinges and all of that. Um, it would have been better to get that stuff first, but we didn't realize their cutting station was like as far away as it was. So we're gonna do that and then get home and put everything in. So in addition to the wood, you're gonna wanna get a power drill and one and a half and two inch number six wood screws an electric staple gun and staples, 12 three-hole hinges, eight draw clatches, and two rolls of garden netting. The garden netting I got on Amazon. All of these items are also listed below. So as soon as we got home, we went ahead and took everything out of the trunk and laid it out to get it as organized as possible so everything would run smoothly. So we got of our blah, blah, blah. we got all of our wood out of the car. So we got some posts here. Let me back up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm filming. He can't do nothing. I can't never do nothing. Uh, anyway. So we got some posts here. Then we got our slabs for the sides. These are extra because as I mentioned, I had to change the dimensions of everything. And when I did that, I had to recalculate everything on the spot. So I think I got extra boards, which is fine. I asked the guy, he said, since we didn't cut them, we can return it. So those are just there for spares. Then we already have the garden bed that we had. I think we're gonna do blueberries in there, uh, which actually, let's come over here. looks like something's growing in here. I don't know. I don't know if that's a weed. I think that's carrots. I don't know. Is that a snake? No. But anyway, blueberries will probably go in there and then we're gonna put the four garden beds along that wall. Stay tuned to see us put them together. So when Adam and I started doing our research on growing and making these garden beds, we decided it would be best to not only make the garden bed, but to make a lid as well. We have a lot of squirrels and rodents in our neighborhood, and we wanted to make sure that they would not be able to get a hold of our food. So right now we're assembling the beds, and then later on I'm going to show you how we put the lids together. So for the actual bed, the dimensions are four by six rectangles. And to put those together, right now I'm screwing three screws in along the edge of the six foot plank. So I'm screwing those all in just until the screw reaches the other side of the board. That helps a little bit, or it helped me a little bit into getting it through to what is going to be connected to the four foot board. So right now you just see me screwing those in and then I lift the board up to double check to make sure I didn't screw through too much. So to get the two boards together, you're gonna to hold the six foot board horizontal and the four foot board vertical. Then you're gonna line them up, make sure everything's straight and finish those screws through into the four foot board. You also wanna make sure that you're holding the power drill as straight as possible. 
especially if you're using one buzz like we did, there's not a lot of room for error. If you turn or hold the drill in an angle at all, it's gonna shoot through the sides of the wood. So after you get the sides assembled, you're going to wanna add a post in each corner of the bed for added support. If you did your dimensions the same as mine, there will also be a few inches of the post that come out of the bottom. That's gonna act as a stake to keep it sturdy in the ground. So to get everything connected, I just did two screws on one corner and one screw on the other corner. The side with the two screws, I did them wider apart. So like one on the top and the bottom. And then on the other side where there was just one, I kept that screw kind of in the middle just to make sure that all of my ends were covered. So here I am minding my own business, making great progress. Look down, boom, a bird decided to poop on me. I mean, this is just literally the story of my life every single day. So I have finished all four beds. They are, let me stand this way a little better. Okay, they're six feet long ways four feet horizontally and then we have these mid post so just to show you guys how we put it together the six feet on the outside of the four feet we did three screws one two three and then for the post I did two screws on one side and then one screw on the other side in the middle so there's three all together for those. If you can see here, it's got a peg coming up underneath. So, so we got all four beds here and I'll take you back to what we're gonna work on next. These are supplies for the lid and as well as these. So we got um, 16, six foot, We've got 16 six foot and then 16 four foot and those are going to be the tops and the bottoms parts of the lid that's going to go on here i'm going to go ahead and start getting these connected and assemble them so you can see what i'm talking about so now let's move on to constructing the lid to assemble the top and the bottom portion of the lid it's pretty much going to be the same thing you did for the actual bed I'm going to pre-drill the screws into the six feet post and then drill those to the four feet post. Since Adam ended up having to go to work, I did this part on my own. Right now I have the four foot post in my right hand and the six feet on the left side. I did that twice and then I'm going to set it down on the ground with the four feet post facing upwards to screw the other side of the six foot post onto it. You'll see what I mean in a second. So here I am screwing the second six foot post onto each of the four foot posts finishing that rectangle. You are going to do this step a total of eight times. So now that you have the tops and the bottoms done, you're going to connect the two with four vertical posts for each. The first thing you want to do is secure everything with a C-clamp to give you a better grip. Then you're going to take a two inch screw and go in one direction and a one and a half inch screw and go in on the other side. I will put an example on the screen just so that everything makes sense. You are going to repeat this step on all four corners, then connect the other six by four square to the opposite end.
Now that the lid is fully constructed, you need to add some chicken net or wire or some kind of netting to the top and the sides so that you won't get any critters in your food. I use a staple gun for this portion and I definitely strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that you use an electric staple gun. The video that I watched on constructing the lid suggested that and I thought, oh, it's not gonna be a big deal. We already have a hand stapler, but it makes a big difference. It, For me anyway, it's hard to press down on that lever and the electric staple gun, as you see, makes it go by much faster. And also a tip for stapling towards the bottom, instead of just ending on the outside of the lid, I decided to go a little step further and bring the netting on the inside and staple it there. I felt like if I would have just stapled on the outside and left it that way, it would have frayed and eventually come apart. So now that I got the sides completed, I'm working on the top. I'm just lining everything up and slowly stapling. Also, when I stapled the netting to the side, I left about an inch and a half of leeway so that when I stapled the top, I can flip the side over the top and create another flap, almost similar to how you wrap a present. I also put an example on the screen. After you get the top stapled, you wanna go through and cut off all the excess fabric. And there you have a finished lid. Now we're on to the final step, which is adding the hinges and the draw clutches to connect the lid and the bed. This step is optional, but we decided to do it because I really didn't want to chance the wind blowing it off or anything accidentally knocking it over. The easiest way to do this is to lay the bed and the lid on its side next to each other. I went ahead and screwed the first half of the hinges onto the lid and then pushed the bed and the lid together and screwed the second half of the hinge. After you finish the hinges, you wanna flip the bed over to the other side and add the clatches. These are going to keep the bed closed and when you want to open it you just release the hatch and you can open the bed. So there's two components, a top and a bottom. You want to make sure that you line everything up and screw it in so that it's tight but not too tight to undo the lever. Here is a close-up. And I would like to also add that I am by no means a professional so if you see me doing something wrong please do not come for me. Also, ignore my nails. Quarantine was rough. So after you get done with the clatches, you can place your beds anywhere you want in your yard and you are finished. Here is a look at the final product. I am extremely happy with how these beds turned out. They're serving their purpose for keeping all the rodents away and our food is doing great. It's been about two months since we've made these and everything is going pretty smoothly. If you like this video, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, come back again, and thanks for watching.